I have decided that I'm going to get rid of all my Canon flashes, all my Canon speed lights. Gone, kaboom, sold, done. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Ricky and welcome back to another video. So we're gonna be talking about Canon versus Godox flashes. So you guys know me, if you've ever been on the channel, please check out the other videos. You know that I'm a Canon fanboy. Since the beginning, since the beginning of time, I have shot Canon, like since I was a fetus, like I was shooting Canon. I've been shooting Canon for a very long time since the 20D. Canon, I love Canon gear, Canon flash. I was just 100% Canon. It wasn't until now. Like you guys know, I shoot weddings, events as a photographer for almost too many years. Uh, but Canon has just like been my go-to speed lights. So a good friend of mine, Fetty from Fetty Photography, as well as Gary Flom from Gary Flom Photography. They're also wedding photographers. Uh, great, super great friends of mine. I will leave a link down below you can go check out their IG and amazing photographers love them great friends of mine they have finally been able to convince me to try Godox now I'm not new to the Godox system I shoot with Godox uh, video lights as you can see here on my in the studio here for YouTube all their stuff is Godox because let's be honest the price is a big factor in terms of purchasing our gear and equipment I think if Canon has ever seen my channel, which maybe when I get big enough, if you guys subscribe and like the info that I'm providing, but if I ever get big enough, Canon is probably gonna like never send me anything to test out because this is gonna be like the second video that I'm gonna put out and say, hey, you're like, Canon flashes are just, eh, they're okay. Canon flashes are really, really great, but now that we're moving into the mirrorless side of space, uh, I just mentioned in another video that Canon launched their EL1, which, it's a great flash, it's awesome, but it doesn't really help mirrorless users. And that's kind of what they're pushing. Really, really interesting. Okay, so the 600 series flash is really great stuff. I mean, they're awesome. They've been a workhorse for me as a wedding photographer. They've been abused. They've been just constant flash. They're, they, they're weather sealed. They've been wet, you know, walking outside with a bride from let's just say the church to the parking lot. It gets wet. Sometimes there's rain and you got to commit. You're not gonna go take off your flash. They're weather sealed. They last. They're good pieces of equipment. Look like even this one. I don't know if you guys can hear. However, my biggest gripe with Canon is how expensive they are when it comes to repairing their equipment. Even if you're a CPS, CPS, CSP, C, CPS, anyway, if you're a Canon member, they charge you about 150, 160, maybe it's even $170. If you want to fix the hot shoe, it's $175. If the screen went blank and you don't see anything, it's $175. In the end, when you're spending so much money just to repair these guys, I don't know, it's, it just becomes really expensive. So now that I have a studio set up, I've been doing more headshots and video work and things like that, I started looking into my studio setup of lights and that, and that consists of Godox lights yet again. I'm currently using uh, Godox's or Flashpoint's 8600 Pros, 8200s. Well, if you don't own them, like you know, like there's nothing in that competes with that in its price point. So for me, it made sense to, where's, so unprepared, so unprepared for this one. But that is because I'm excited to share with you guys about these systems. So yeah, my good friends, uh, Gary and Fetty have 100% finally convinced me to pick up you know, these Godox V1s. Now I did a video way back, maybe it was the Godox V862, V860 version two. And I said that thing was, that um, how do I say it wasn't good because I didn't like these flashes, these, uh, not the flashes. I didn't like the infrared beam. It took a while to lock on, unlike the Canons. They, they kind of admit it's like this bright red, I don't know, X thing, X pattern for focus uh, in dark situations. And it was just, it was ugly. It took a little while. It was very strong and very intense on the brides and grooms. This does the same thing. And I'm telling you this because it does. It, it does the same exact thing. If you're a DSLR shooter, 
this will do the same thing. However, I have jumped into mirrorless system. I shoot with the EOS R's and this doesn't even take effect. So in terms of infrared, it 100% uses the Canon's built-in autofocus system to autofocus, even in dark situations. But what I love about these flashes is the price point. You really can't beat what you get in this price point. And the round head does add a certain dimension to your images, like the, the light it produces is different, especially when you bounce even on something close, like a wall right next to you. Uh, the light projection is different. Um, they have these magnetic things. You know, this video is not about like this specific flash, but the Godox in general, the 8200s. It is a portable studio strobe. You have your bare bulb mechanism. You can have a Fresnel light. But the beautiful thing about this is it produces three times the amount of light as a single speed light. So it's almost studio strobe-ish, not really, but almost there, uh, to get that just punch of light that you need. They have an adapter called the 8280B2, AB, ABD2. Shoot, I have to look that up. I forget the name, these numbers and letters and whatever, they're getting confusing. But they have an adapter that you can actually stick two of these 8200s together to create 400 watt second light source. So yeah, but all flashes, all the Godox, the V1s, all of them, they have lithium ion batteries. They last longer. Actually, they last quite a few events before you even need to recharge them. Uh, even the 8200s, they have this huge lithium ion battery. Really, really nice here. They're just, they're, it's kind of a workhorse for me now, especially in studio. And again, that's what I'm saying about versatility and price. You can use them in studio. You can use them at weddings and events. I'm limiting the stuff that I need to carry. Like, it's great. It's awesome. It's a lifesaver. It's a back saver. It saves your back. Like, I don't carry these on my back, but, you know, my light stand bag. If you guys are coming from a Canon system and you're jumping into the Godox world, it's, I mean, specifically the V1, again, I just found this out. It's pretty cool. I want to share it with you. Uh, is you would kind of think that you would need to uh, do this. Wait, I don't know if you can see that. Do this to change the power of your flash. Like, this is probably the most annoying thing that I found out about this flash, but that is until I actually started hitting the up. Oh, sorry, wait. Oh, man. Select the actual power rating and hit up and down. Look at that. You can go up in one third stop increments without doing this whole thing. I shot so many events with this thing and portrait sessions and here I am just trying to thumb my way through the power settings. And I'm just like, dude, you know, it's just because I don't read manuals and I don't think you read manuals either. And that's, why, that's why you guys are on YouTube anyway. So, but uh, yeah, I think you'll like that feature. The V1 specifically has a and again, this is not a uh, V1 review or anything like that. It's got this LED bulb. Hi. Hello. I actually use this as a as sort of an accent light for video work. So when you're buying, uh, how do I turn this off? So when you're buying pieces of equipment and you can use it in its most versatile form, meaning it's a flash, it's an LED, it's I can use it for the studio work. I can use it for my wedding and event work. It just becomes a no-brainer. Sometimes when I'm shooting in the studio and I need just maybe a pin light on something like something that I'm photographing, if I need a pin light, I can just plug this guy in and put on the grid or put on the snoot, which you can get the attachment for, and shoot that and create a pin light effect on whatever my subject needs focusing on. This system is just completely talking to each other. Uh, the wireless triggers are working, the big studio lights working, all of this kind of works together in their own system. And so when I was using the Canons, I had an issue because I couldn't trigger both the Godox and the Canon unless I had the uh, transmitter on my hot shoe. And that just builds more things. I mean, that thing, when you get the attachment on your camera on the hot shoe, the trigger, and then put the flash on the trigger, uh, it just becomes a whole mess. It's just, uh, it's ugly. It's not really, really pretty. Um, so for some of you guys, maybe you guys are shooting the same thing or maybe you guys are just shooting weddings and events. 
I'm telling you, I'm not sponsored in any way, shape, or form, but Godox has really kind of stepped up their game in terms of like flashes like this. I mean, the build quality is not the same. That's flat out be honest. You're paying for a premium brand, but you're also paying for a premium in materials. Canon has that. I don't think Godox has that yet, but they're doing really well. Their, their, their stuff is really great. I'm 100% Godox now. Uh, for again, my both wedding events, studio work, all that stuff is Godox. They all talk to each other. It's amazing. Um, video equipment is really expensive. I mean, when you look at the number of tripods you need to have, all the accent lighting, the soft boxes, and all this stuff, and you're separating your budget between photography and the video gear, you gotta kind of wonder like, is it worth buying the Canon light? I love Canon cameras, by the way. You know that. So, but. Yeah, so I think that's all I have for you guys. If you guys like this video, if you found it informational, if it helps you make a purchasing decision or you guys want to just hang out with me, that would be great. Hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, hit the little bell so you guys get notified when my next video goes up. And I think as of 2021, I'm going to start pushing videos for you guys, if that helps. And uh, by hitting that like button, subscribe, notification it helps the whole algorithm thing and kind of inspiring to make more videos for you again thank you for watching guys i'll see you in the next video shoot so i noticed so i noticed the whole video i had like a do you guys see that do you guys see like that shoulder thing because this was hanging on like a hanger you know to dry and stuff i mean like these bumps man i hate that